out last week, but it's very nice to herald in this beautiful day, and we want to um, say thank you to anybody who is mother or has been like a mother to someone or who may soon be a mother. <sighs> um, hope you have a great and blessed day. A couple of announcements. Per shawl is Tuesday night at 6.30. Anybody who likes to could join us here at church or um, if you're interested, I can send you the Zoom link because um, as many of us know, Aaron joins us via Zoom each month. So, um, and if you're not a fiber arts person, it's more talking than doing. <laughs> so you're welcome to. <laughs> <clears throat> but if you'd like to learn something, we could probably teach you a little something. Um, also, during this week, we um, determined that this year, 2024, we will not be able to be a National Night Out host, but we're going to keep everything kind of intact and hopefully next year we can um, beef up people who are um, interested in helping with that and bring it back. But for now, this year we will not be a national night outside. Um, other announcements, I can't remember anything, geez. Oh, I remember one more. We will be cleaning up the grounds on June 1st. Um, the announcements will be in the newsletter and in the, you know, we'll make them in the bulletin. I'm not sure what time yet. And honestly, the weeds don't care if you come a week or two early and pull them out. It'll be fine. Um, but if you can make it that day, that'd be awesome. Okay, are there any other announcements for the good of the congregation? <laughs> Thank you. Please rise as we join the worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life through jesus christ our savior and lord amen holy god who is rich in mercy loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with christ by his grace you have been saved in the name of jesus christ your sins are entirely forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Now please join in our gathering song, Crown Him with Many Crowns.
and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. When they prayed and said, 
Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us, with, show us which one of those of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry. An apostleship from whose Judas turned aside to go to his place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of John, chapter 5, verses 9 through 13. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater. For this is the testimony of God, that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his Son. And this is the testimony God gave us in eternal life, and this life in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write these things to you, who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise as you welcome the gospel. Interesting moments in the New Testament. 
There's a lot going on in this little clipping of Acts, but it's full of, you know, references, context, depth that you may not see at first. Really, at first sight, it may seem even a little silly. I mean, really, the disciples basically rolled a dice to see who would get to replace Judas. And why did he have to be replaced anyway? What's so important about this twelve? There were 120 men there, not to mention women and children, because when they say 120 people, they mean 120 adult men. Why did they need to have those 12 specific men set aside, separate, sanctified for a different purpose? So let's dig into that a little bit. I'll start with the whole 12 thing. I'm sure many of you have already noticed just how important this number 12 is throughout the Bible. And that's because 12 is a number that in Hebrew signifies order, completeness, good governance, perfection. So when they pick 12 disciples, it's not just an abstract random number. It's not just the amount that feels right to be wandering around the desert together. It is to fulfill God's promise completeness of a community for all of creation. And it harkens back to the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 sons of Jacob. So this number 12 is really important, not so much because they need 12 people with a special title before they all part ways from Jerusalem, but because 12 is symbolizing everyone. With all 12, it is complete. It is fulfilled. There is enough so they have to replace Judas. They have to bring in a 12th person so that everyone is included. But how are they going to pick? They have 120 men there, 120 believers. So how do they decide who gets this special honor of being one of the 12? Now, how complicated we make these decisions in our lives when we need to find someone to fill a job interviews, resumes, rounds of questions, background checks, all this careful thought. And they will this. They leave it in God's hands. Because that's what it means to cast lots. It can mean a couple different things, but one of the most common ways lots were cast was really this early sort of dice made out of sheep's knuckles. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but they look like little dice. They scratch into the sides of them, roll them, and see who gets hit. We left this entirely in God's hands to fulfill the 12. And why would they do it that way? Because that's faith to them. And frankly, they have two great candidates. They say that both of these men, Matthias and Joseph, have been with Jesus since the beginning. They've been there, they've been learning, they've been growing, they've been doing ministry with them. And so, they roll the dice, and they let God decide. They let faith fill in the rest. And then God does. The lot falls on Matthias, and he becomes the 12th disciple. And then we never hear from him again. You can read through the whole rest of the book of Acts. He does not come up again. That is it for Matthias. He gets this one little moment. And that is kind of crazy to me. But there's something significant about that. Something kind of beautiful, even. The book of Acts, if you read through it cover to cover, you will notice all of these figures slipping in and out. We get this little story about Matthias here, a moment with Lydia there, this little episode on the island of Cyprus. It just sort of journeys through all these different personalities, all these places, and no one really gets to be the star of the show. But that's because there's a different star of the show. God, the Holy Spirit. The New Testament is not a story of a single person, except maybe Jesus. And the Bible is not a book about a single person. No human gets to be the star of the show. As a former supervisor of mine used to describe the book of Acts, it's God's work their hands. God is the agent who's doing all the different moments. He's the one who's guiding the story. The people just go in along the way for a moment here or there. 
And I think there's something that we can learn from that, from this anonymous nature of these servants of God. They didn't do it for glory. They didn't do it so that their name would be written down in a book. And in many cases, their name wasn't written down in the book. We have those 120 men whose names we will never know, but who were there following Jesus and who set out from Jerusalem to keep doing the work. But we'll never know who they were because they were not the star of the show. And I think that tells us something about Christian love. The Christian love is not boastful. It doesn't need to be congratulated. It just does the job regardless of who may know afterwards. But that's not to say that Christian love should be quiet either. In fact, I think it is a pretty loud thing. Christian love going out into the world makes waves. It's a way to change lives, to impact people. That's another thing you can do if you follow through the book of Acts, is you can watch all these numbers. Luke loves to tell us exactly how many people were at certain events. You'll hear a story like, and then Peter went and baptized, and a thousand men were converted. Just to show how big it was, how dramatic it was, how quickly this movement was spreading. So that love isn't quiet. It's big. It's loud. It's powerful. It's a tool that we can use for so much good in the world, even if we never get any of the credit. In fact, I think if you look at some of the biggest change makers we've had, sure, there are the famous ones, the ones whose names we all know. I mean, there's Martin Luther. We all know who that guy is, who formed the church. Do we all know the other writers who were around him? All those other pastors and ministers who were doing the work day in and day out? Probably not. I think most of us, if we're doing our best work and love, won't be recognized for it. We all know those people who really just keep things running, whether it's here at church or at your workplace or somewhere else, but who never take credit for it. When you try to thank them, blow it off, like, oh, no, 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 it's, it's just a thing I do. That's the kind of love that we see in this Testament. And that's the kind of love that we can emulate. So that is my prayer today for us that we can love faithfully, loudly, with courage and with strength, but not necessarily for the credit or for the glory, because the glory goes to God. In our gospel lesson for today, Jesus prays for the disciples. That's what this section is. He's in those last moments before his arrest, and he's praying for the disciples. And it's a prayer that we can take to heart as well. Jesus prays that they will have certainty, that they will be confident, that they will be protected, and that though they will remain in the world, they will know they are not of the world, that they are of a different kingdom, that they will know they are holy. The disciples are about to embark on the most difficult journey they've had to make yet, scattering out from Jerusalem, going to every corner of the earth, spreading the gospel. But Jesus is not afraid for them. He is confident that God will continue to protect them. And we can be confident in that same protection, in that same love. You see, we may not make it into the book. Our names may get lost along the way. But the work will not be forgotten. The love will not be forgotten. And the story of God will continue to be told, even if we're just a little part of it. Amen. Amen. Please rise as we join in our call of the day.
apostles. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for our prayers and intercession. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Our petitions this morning will be end with God of grace, to which all are invited to respond. Hear our prayer. You sanctify us in truth. Your word is truth. Send your church out into the world to spread your love and joy. Embolden all bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay ministers to be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. God of grace, your creation groans under the strain of pollution. Preserve melting glaciers and dwindling forests. Bolster those who work for climate justice and help us to be good and faithful stewards of your creation. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people seek wisdom, understanding, and peace. Guide all those who are governed and inspire them to work on behalf of the most vulnerable in our midst. Please keep safely first responders, those serving in the military, and those whose duty it is to protect others. God of grace. Your children need your loving care. Protect them from all harm. Comfort those in any affliction. Support those who grieve and bring peace. We especially pray for those we remember out loud or in our hearts before you. In that children of Ukraine, Hear our prayer. Your spirit lives with us here. Inspire the work of this congregation and unite us as one. Bless all mothers in our midst. Console those for whom this day is difficult and gather us under the care of your loving wings. God of grace. Your saints dwell within your light. Keep us ever faithful for those who have gone before us in faith. Inspire us by their witness. God of grace, into your trusting hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Please rise. Peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share time of peace with those around you.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus our Savior, Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their ending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again. We give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessings and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sins, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with the saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Table, all is ready and all are welcome. 
now receive God's blessing. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us join in our sending song.
Share the good news. Thanks be to God.